Hi guys, um, so we're back. Uh, we're gonna talk about graphing rational functions. And um, we've broken it down into several pieces to make it a little easier. So we're gonna practice each of those pieces. And then at the end, we're gonna put it all together so you have to do all the pieces. So make sure you keep your notes. Um, I also want to say, um, for those of you in um, mine and Mr. Call's class, if you're doing the Nearpods and you need to go back, and you've done the Nearpod, um, and you need to go back and look at the videos. Don't. I would not go into the AirPods if you were. If I were you, I'd go onto YouTube, and and search for the name of the the lesson, and the video should come up um, underneath my name. Um, so that should help out. Uh, so you don't have to go back into the Nearpod and um, have your answers disappear or we have to re-enter them. Um, just a suggestion. So here we go. Um, we're going to talk about uh, the domain. So our first section or chunk of graphing rational functions is to be able to find the domain of that rational function. So um, let's define what a rational function is again since um, let's just define it again. So a function, uh, a rational function is a function that is a ratio of two polynomial polynomial two polynomial functions. So that would be if I have r of x, that's my rational function. Rational function is going to equal two polynomial functions. So that would be p of x divided by r of x. So just two different sum functions, just two different functions. Um, p of x and r of x doesn't matter what they are. They're just two different functions. Um, and is defined if and only if its denominator denominator is not zero. So that's the biggest thing to remember is the denominator cannot ever be zero. Because if I have a fraction and the bottom or the denominator is zero, then it's undefined. So I cannot have a zero in my denominator. Um, so we should remember that. So let's talk about the domain of a rational function. Um, it includes all real numbers except those that make the denominator equal to zero, okay? So all real numbers except those that make the denominator equal to zero. So that really gives us the clue on how we find our domain. So here we go. Um, speaking of our next thing, how do we find our domain? And there's three steps. So I'm just gonna kind of um, zoom in on those three steps as we fill it in. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna set our denominator um, equal to zero. Okay, so we're just going to take the bottom part of our fraction, set it equal to zero. Okay, and then we are going to, step two is we're going to solve to find the x values that cause the denominator to equal zero. These are the x values where the function is undefined. Okay, um, so I'm gonna set it equal to zero, solve for x. Those are the values for x that will make my denominator equal zero. So those are the fun those are where it will my function will be undefined. Um, so then the domain is all real numbers. Um, except those found in number two. So we're going to write it a couple different ways um, in the examples, and I'm going to show you just a couple different ways to write it, um, depending in the on, so sorry, in the Delta Math assignment, you'll have to look. What I do if I don't know how they want the answer written is I just go to show an example and it'll show me how they want the answer inputted and then that's the way I would input the answer in Delta Math. Um, and so on your homework assignment um, in Nearpod, I would probably maybe do both of them or one or the other. I, I'm not that um, 
particular as far as long as you get the answer right and you know what the domain is. Um, for those of you going into calculus next year, um, I will show you which way they're going to probably want your domain answered. So here we go. Um, so our first problem says find the domain of the given rational function. So that's all we're going to do for the rest of it. I have three example problems. We're just going to find the domain and state what it is. That's all we're doing today. So step one says I'm going to take my denominator. So step one says take your denominator. set it equal to zero. Okay, so I'm going to take my denominator and set it equal to zero. So that means I have x minus 7 because that's my denominator. My denominator, so you guys know, is this part, the bottom part, and I'm going to set it equal to zero. Okay, now I'm just going to solve for x using whatever method I can. If I have to factor, I'm going to factor. If I'm going to use a quadratic formula, I'm going to use a quadratic formula. Complete the square. Whatever, how, however I can solve it is how I'm going to solve the equation. Okay? So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to add 7 to both sides. And I get x, that's equals 7. Okay, that's good. So I've solved it. And now I'm going to state my domain. So my domain, um, and this is the way, the first way I'm going to write it is the way that um, you would write it if you're going to take the calculus class next year. So just any calculus class, um, just so you guys know. Um, so my domain is going to be from negative infinity, which is not included, to 7, which is not included union or joined with, including um, positive 7, which is not included, to infinity, which is also not included. So that is how you would write the domain. And we have written it this way before, so you guys should be used to seeing it. Um, it's just been a while. Or I could actually just write it out. And I could say the domain um, of, oops, of f of x is all real numbers except except seven okay and that's what this says so this part up here says the same thing okay so that's it that's all we're gonna do now we're gonna go to the second problem do the second and third problem do exactly the same thing notice I did not even look at the numerator I'm only dealing with the denominator and that's it I'm just gonna make this a little bigger now um, so I'm gonna take the denominator which is this piece down here okay and I am going to set it equal to zero so I have x squared plus 5x plus 6 equals a zero and since I have an x squared and I've got three terms so it's a trinomial I'm going to actually try and factor it first so I'm gonna say is there two terms that multiply to be six and add to be five um, well yeah two and three so I this could factor to x plus two times x plus three equals zero and then I have two things multiplying together that equal zero that means one of those things has to equal zero so either x plus two equals zero or x plus three equals zero and then I subtract two subtract three and I get x equals negative two and x equals negative three so I have two answers this time so my domain is going to be a little weird a little longer this time so again my domain is going to go from and I'm going to go from smallest to biggest always my domain always goes from smallest to biggest so I'm going to start with negative infinity to negative three and negative three is not included uh, union um, and then negative 3, 2, what's my next smallest number? Well, that's negative 2. Okay, union, negative 2 to positive infinity. So there's three, um, three parentheses this time. 
that's okay. Or I could write out my um, sentence that explains it and that's going to say the domain of g of x is all real numbers except um, negative 3 and negative 2. Okay? There you go. All right. And we have one more problem to do. Um, here we go. Make it big enough here. So I'm going to take my denominator, which is down at the bottom again, just the bottom. Remember, for domain, I'm only worried about the denominator. So I'm going to take the bottom, which is x squared plus 4 equals 0. So now I, I have an x squared, no x. Um, so I'm just going to try and get the x by itself. Well, how do I do that? Well, I'm going to subtract 4. Four. The easiest way is for me to subtract 4. Um, and then I get x squared equals negative 4. And I have an x squared. So how do I undo the x? Correct. I take a square root. And if I square root one side, I have to square root the other side. Good. And then the square root of x squared is x equals plus or minus, yes, plus or minus, um, the square root of negative 4, right? Um, if you put that in your calculator, you're going to get an error. So the other way we learn to write it, just so you know, is the square root of 2i. So um, we know that x is not real. It's imaginary, right? Is imaginary. Imaginary. Good. Um, it is imaginary. So that kind of helps it's it's not real um, so that help tells me that my domain because I don't have any real um, exclusions my domain is negative infinity to positive infinity okay or um, the domain of h of x is all real numbers and that's it that's all we're gonna do um, if I had three numbers I would have more um, parentheses if I had three exclusions um, you just keep adding on my parentheses would keep getting bigger and bigger um, in order from least to greatest um, if you guys have any questions please contact us uh, we will talk to you soon. Have a great day, and we'll see you for the second video. Bye.